Hello everyone. Um, what I've got to show you here is a few combinations of uh, different things. Similar to my last video about this, um, I've got two sheets of paper with a drawing pin in the middle. And the bottom piece of paper represents the rotor with the magnets on it. And the top piece represents the stator with the coils mounted on it. So here we are, we've got this is a representation of what Romero had, which was eight magnets on the rotor and nine coils on the stator. Now if I line up this magnet with this coil, it's got a yellow arrow on it, indicating the direction of travel of the rotor. And if I turn it one segment, you'll notice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight interactions or events going on counterclockwise to the clockwise direction of the rotor. So that's the first one. The second one thing I want to show you is similar, but at this time I've got an odd number of magnets, nine on the rotor, and an even number, eight, of coils on the stator. Now if we do the same thing again, rotate the, the rotor clockwise, you can see, let's centre it up, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 interactions going with the direction of the rotor travel. Now the third thing, similar, by the way I should point out that the first one, Romero's, it's a, a higher number of stator magnets and the second one I showed you was a lower number of stators. So here we have 12 magnets on the rotor and 11 um, stator coils and as you can see that also travels with the, the events happening they travel with the rotation of the rotor and you get the, the amount of interactions corresponds to the amount of magnets on the on the rotor. So that was clockwise. And the last thing, very similar, but I've got this time more coils than I have magnets, namely 11 magnets and 12 stator coils. And so if I line that up with a, with a coil hole, centre it up, move it one segment you can see that the events happen counterclockwise or uh, the opposite direction to the rotor travel. So really, in conclusion, it doesn't matter whether you have an odd or even amount of magnets on the rotor. If you want with the, uh, if you want the the events to happen in the same direction as the 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 rotors travelling, then you need a, a lower number of coils compared to how many magnets you've got. That's the main one. And just to show you, this is called a Muller dynamo, and I believe Bill Muller had 15 magnets on his rotor and 14 coils. And as you can see. If I move it one segment, that travels um, count with counterclockwise, sorry, clockwise, with the direction of travel. And because there's more magnets and coils, the segment travelled is much smaller than the early ones I showed you. So. I should imagine there's some sort of proportionality between 
the events going on and the amount of magnets you have. But as long, if you have a lower number of coils than magnets, the events will travel with the direction of the rotor travel. But I think what's significant is Romero, his device is showing the opposite direction of rotor travel. I don't know if this is significant, and I'm not. Sh I have no idea if anyone else has brought this up or mentioned it or thought about it. I just thought I'd do this video to point out. Thanks very much. Any comments? Um, you know what to do.